thank you for each and every person under the sound of my voice. And I pray that you would bless them, touch them, minister life to them. I thank you for all that you're doing in their life. And Lord, I pray that you would have your way. Change us all for eternity. And I know you will. In Jesus' name, everybody says amen. amen. All right, so here's what we got. We're, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. And I'll be very honest with you. I did not expect... Uh, to spend this many weeks on this. I've been on this for probably three weeks since Easter. I've been talking about the Holy Spirit and what the new life in Christ looks like. And then, believe it or not, I'm not going to finish today. I'm going to come back next weekend. is a Mother's Day, so we're going to minister to moms and, and all that good stuff. But then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue it. And it's very rare that I would even do that, but it's just the way it's happened. And I'll be honest with you. What I did this week is I actually split my message in half, all right? And I did that on purpose because I want to make sure that as we move into these things and we talk about these things, that it's crystal clear what I'm trying to say. So I'd rather go a little bit slower, extend it for a little bit to make sure everybody's on the same page. So let's get into it and let's go right to our first verse that we're going to go with. You ready? Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. And what I want to talk about today is the doctrine of baptisms. All right? And we're going to get specific about it here in a minute. But let's just look at this. It says, therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles. Everybody say it's elementary. Elementary. These are things you learn or you should have learned at a basic level is what he's saying. The elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection. That word perfection there, it means maturity. You know, it is possible to be grown. <laughs> Y'all picking up what I'm putting down. It's possible to be grown, but not mature. And in Christ, we don't just want to be grown. We want to be grown and mature. Does that make sense, everybody? And that's what the verse is addressing. Now, he's going to give you six foundational understandings. Six, all right? Six foundations that you need to understand or at least know about. And here's what they are. He says, let us, move on, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. I mean, you know, repentance from dead works is a foundation. You should move away from dead works and move to walking in the new life of Christ. Amen? How about this? Of faith toward God. Hello, can't get any more basic than that. Faith towards God. You got to have faith in God. How about this one? Of the doctrine of baptisms. Notice the text. The doctrine of baptisms. Notice it isn't the doctrine of baptism. It's the doctrine of baptisms. It's plural. All right? There's more than one. And most of us would probably say there's just one. But there actually is more than one, and we're going to cover those. But check this out. It goes on to say, of the laying on of hands, that's a basic understanding, of resurrection of the dead, that's basic, the eternal judgment, that's basic, and this we will do if what? God permits. And I love the way that's worded because here's what it's saying. Across the street in the building, you know, we have to call every once in a while, and the city has to come out and they have to do an inspection. So, for example, uh, just a few weeks ago, we had to call to get a wall inspection done. And the wall inspection, they come out and they inspect the wall before you put drywall and before you put insulation into the wall. They have to okay it. Why do they okay it? They okay it because, believe it or not, they want to inspect the wall because you might tend to put something on top of a faulty problem. And you may not know that for maybe a week, a month, a year, or 10 years down the road. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you inspect as you go so that as something is built, there isn't a problem in the underlying uh, understanding of it. Does everybody get what I'm saying? So in light of that, when it comes to us in growing in God, believe it or not, it's almost as if the word of God is saying that God inspects at certain points. And you gotta make sure that the foundation is right. Because believe it or not, it's possible to build on a faulty foundation. It's possible for you to try and build on something only to have it crumble because you didn't make sure the foundation was solid. Back whenever they were pouring the footers, they had to make sure that the footers were a certain depth, a certain strength, a, a certain thickness, and all that because once that building sits on there, if the foundation is wrong, guess what? Everything's gonna crumble underneath. Amen? So what he's saying is, if we're going to build and we're going to grow in God, we got to make sure our foundation is solid. One of the basic understandings, he calls it elementary. Elementary principles of this is the doctrine of baptisms, okay? So what are the baptisms he's referring to and what does it look like? Well, I'm going to tell you this. You ready? 
most of us would be able to identify the first one, although it's a little bit harder for some. We might identify it, and that's our salvation. That's the first baptism. I'll, I'll show you these all in the Word here in just a minute. Then the second one, most 95% of the world knows, is water baptism. That's the one most people identify. So if I was to say, tell me about baptisms, most people would identify water first, and then they might be able to tell me about the salvation experience being a baptism. But after that, pretty much stops. It pretty much stops. Most people don't mo know much about baptisms beyond that. But it is plural, and it is a basic understanding. So let me just say this. There is a baptism that no one seems to want to talk about or no one talks about. All right? And I'm going to tell you what it is. It's called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, in light of that, I'm just going to tell you this. You ready? When I gave my heart to Christ, I gave my heart to Christ when I was 14 years old. It was the weekend before Mother's Day. <laughs> weekend before Mother's Day. Fairview Baptist Church on Bell Avenue before there was a Walmart. Come on, somebody. All right? Uh, but, but Bell Avenue, Pastor Curtis Southwood, just as I am, 14 times until somebody gets to the altar. You know, come on, where are y'all people growing up? Yeah, all right. So anyway, so I gave my heart to Christ. And Mr. Mr. Webster is the one who led me to the Lord, all right? Mr. Webster prayed the sinner's prayer, uh, took me through the Romans road. I gave my heart to Christ. And back then, they didn't wait long. They didn't wait long. If you got saved, you were coming back that night. Guess what for? baptism baby we did, if there was a 24-hour window if you did not get dipped in that it didn't take <laughs> that's what I assumed but anyway so we came back that night believe it or not and we got baptized all right so in light of that in light of that or at least that's how I remember it in light of that that's two baptisms right there but can I tell you from the time I was 14 from the time I was 14 to I was 21 no one ever told me about another baptism not one, not one person, ever. Here's, the, here's, I'm not saying this is what they said, but I'm gonna tell you what I heard. What I heard in my life was, at 14, I went to the altar, I got saved, I gave my heart to Christ, I got water baptized. Then it was like, okay now, tie a knot in the rope, hold on, hope that you can do this thing right. And, and I'm just gonna give you what Charlie thought. Charlie, hold on and don't kill anybody before you get to heaven. Come on, somebody. I'm just telling you what I thought, all right? And it was like, don't flip out, don't kill nobody, just act normal the best you can and try and get to heaven. And that was my mindset. Watch this. Until I was 21 years old, I get down in Florida. I, I get talking to a guy named Dex. Some, some of you have met him. He came here and ministered with me. Anyway, and he starts telling me about this baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I'll be honest with you, I had never heard of such thing. I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, oh, yeah, that's where it's at, man. Well, it was at that point. Whenever I refer in my message, a lot of times you'll hear me say it this way. When I got on fire for God, y'all hearing what I'm saying? You'll hear me say that. I say it all the time. What I'm talking about is my experience called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I don't say it that way. Why? Because there are people that if I say baptism of the Holy Spirit, they'll automatically tune me out. Okay. And the reason they tune me out is because they've heard that term and it's not been a good context, it's been a negative. So I want to always make sure that whenever I say something, I can articulate it and explain what I'm talking about. So today we're going to go down the path of what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, here's what we're going to do. Today, my only purpose is to identify what it is. How does it work? Two weeks from now, after Mother's Day, I'm going to show you how it functions in your life. But here's what I want to do. I just want to show you what it is. That's my only heart. We'll talk about it later, how it functions. But let's talk about what it is. Because I didn't even know there was a baptism of the Holy Spirit. I didn't even know what it looked like. I, I never even was taught about that. I was told, stay away from anything Holy Spirit related. Okay? That's what I was taught. And so I believed that until I was 21 years old. Only to find out later, man, I totally been sold a bag of goods and no wonder I'm not living in victory in my life. Does that make sense, everybody? All right, so hopefully you hear my heart in that, and hopefully we can move in this. So let's, let's identify the three baptisms first, all right? So let's talk about the first one. This is the easiest one, uh, easiest verse to explain it, and here it is. It says, for by one spirit we were all baptized into, help me out, one body, all right? By what? One spirit, one spirit. Does everybody see that? 
one spirit. We're all baptized into one body. Whether we're Greeks or Jews, whether they're slaves or free, and have all been made to drink of the, help me out, one spirit. So imagine it like this. This isn't the way it happens, but this is Charlie Riley style. You ready? I imagine God, God, this is what the Bible says, by one spirit, so the Holy Spirit's doing it. The Holy Spirit grabs you up by the, t the top of your head. <laughs> probably not like that. I mean, there's probably not like noise, but just go with it, all right? So, all right, he grabs you up by the, by the head, and then he takes you, when you give your heart to Christ, Lord Jesus, come into my life. He goes, all right? And then what's he do? Watch this, everybody. He dips or dunks you into the body of Christ. You are dipped or dunked or submerged. The word baptized means to dip, dunk, or submerge. Does everybody get that? All right? Like Oreo cookies, baby. All right? <laughs> So dip, dunk, or submerge. He submerges you into the body of Christ. When's that, when does that happen? At salvation. Does everybody get that? At your salvation, you are baptized into the body of Christ. Now, let's go into the next one, which everyone knows about, 95% of the world knows about, and that's water baptism. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy what? Spirit. Now get this, everybody. This one right here is the identification with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. That's why we do it. We have baptisms coming up on May 20th and 21st. If you'd like to be a part, sign up. Go to the Go ALC app. Stop by New Here, Star Here. They'll get you all figured out. I actually was told last night about a young lady coming from Los Angeles who watches us every weekend that'll be here to be baptized that weekend. It's going to be awesome, all right? So uh, her, part of her family goes here, and she, she watches online. I think it's awesome. Anyway, in light of that, here we go. So what is the baptism of water? It is the identification with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, all right? Now, I want you to understand, the first one is required for salvation, but the next one isn't, all right? You don't have to be baptized in water to be saved, but you do have to be baptized into the body of Christ to be saved, all right? Now, remind me, listen, everybody, the Holy Spirit <laughs> dips you into the body of Christ. Does everybody get that? Okay, now watch. Now we're going to talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now watch. What you're going to find, and I'm going to show you it in the verses. Matter of fact, it's in all four of the Gospels. But here's my heart. You're going to find that Jesus now returns what the Holy Spirit did. He returns it back to the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, when you get saved, I need sound. I, 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 sorry. <laughs> All right, so boom, you're dipped into the body of Christ. Now watch this, everybody. But when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's Jesus who now dips you into the Holy Spirit. So it's like, <laughs> again, all right? So it, one goes this way and then the other goes that way. So two persons of the Godhead are actually functioning in this. Does everybody get where I'm coming from? All right, so let me show you, let me show you this, all right? Now, before I go there, I wanna, I wanna address one scripture only for, 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 the, uh, for the idea of questions. But here's what I wanna show you. I wanna show you a verse that, that almost sounds like it contradicts everything I'm saying, and let's address it first. It says, Ephesians 4, it says, there is one body, one spirit, just as many were called in one hope of their calling. Watch this. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Whenever I teach on the baptisms, uh, a lot of times people will bring that up to me, and it says that there is one baptism. That, in the context, is talking about your salvation experience, that there's one baptism, that without it, you're not going to heaven. You have to be baptized into the body of Christ to go to heaven. Now, you should be water baptized, and you should be spirit baptized, but the reality is the one that's a requirement for your salvation is the first one, being baptized into the body of Christ. Does everyone get that? Everybody get that? All right. So I just wanted to answer that. There's more I could say about that, but I'm going to leave it right there. So now let's get into all, all four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all speak of the baptism of or with the Holy Spirit, however you want to term it. All right? All four of them. Now, I want you to understand how unique that is. Okay? There's only four things mentioned Four that are in all four Gospels. Only four things that I'm aware of, all right? One of those is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, all right? Feeding of the 5,000, that's another one. But nevertheless, here we go. You ready? Let's look at these verses. Baptism with the Holy Spirit in every Gospel, 
Matthew, here it is. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. This is John the Baptist saying this. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will, help me out, baptize you with the? He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit in fire. Yes, he will. He will baptize. Who's doing the baptism? Jesus is baptizing you with the Holy Spirit in fire. Let's look at this next one. This is Mark. I indeed baptize with water, John the Baptist, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. All right, here's another one. Let's look at this. This is Luke. John answered, saying to all, I indeed baptize with water, but one is mightier than I is coming, whose sandal straps I am not worthy to loose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Absolutely. So we have Jesus baptizing you with the Holy Spirit. Here's the third or fourth one. This is in John. I, uh, I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, upon whom you see the spirit descending and remaining on him. I'm going to come back to that. This is he who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So, so is it biblical to say there is a baptism with the Holy Spirit that Jesus does. Yes. Absolutely. You can't get around it, okay? You can't get around it. There is a baptism with the Spirit. It's absolutely biblical, and it's absolutely in the Word of God in, uh, in crystal clear uh, form. Now, in light of that, let's go a step further. There's one part of this verse I want to point out, and it's this part right here. Upon whom you see the Spirit descending... And remaining on him, this is he who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Let's look at that verse in the Bible. This is Matthew 3.16. Jesus' water baptism. Watch. When he had been baptized, Jesus came immediately from the water. He's water baptized. And behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God, what? Descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Notice the Spirit of God descended and rested on him. Now he is baptized by the Spirit of God. Okay? Now watch. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. You say, What are you saying, Pastor Charlie? Here's what I'm saying Jesus himself was baptized with the Holy Spirit at that moment in time. Everybody listen to me, and this is very, very important. You ready? Jesus never did a miracle before he was baptized with the Holy Spirit. He never did anything. Matter of fact, when he was 12 years old, you remember the story? The, his parents lost him for three days at the temple. Talk about a call to CPS. There you go. <laughs> Some of you thought you were bad parents. <laughs> you lost Jesus for three days. Okay, anyway, I'm done. All right, so now watch this, everybody. So here we are. Here we are. We have, we, have, we have a situation where Jesus is baptizing the believer, and we see it over and over again, okay? Now, in light of that, in light of that, the Spirit of God descended upon Jesus and stayed on him. So let me just ask you a question. It's very, very simple. You ready? Is Jesus our example? Okay, here's my next. Do you want to be like Jesus? Isn't the whole purpose of the Christian life to be like Jesus? Okay, then here's what I'm going to ask. Was Jesus baptized with the Holy Spirit? Absolutely. Now, it's important that we understand kind of the makeup of how this works so that you and I can get a foundational understanding. So here it is. You ready? Let's talk about the difference between you and Jesus. Okay? So now watch this, everybody. Here it is. You ready? Jesus and salvation. Let's talk about that. Um, the answer is yes. <laughs> Was Jesus saved? Okay, now here's a question. Was he ever lost? No. no. <laughs> How many of you know Adam in the garden, he rebelled against God? And when he did, he got the boot. Boot scooting boogie. That's where it came from, right out of there, out of Genesis, all right? Okay, so, so now watch this, everybody. So, so, but before, hear my heart, before Adam and Eve rebelled, did the Spirit of God live on the inside of them? Yeah, we know because the Bible says God breathed into their nostrils. They became a living being and they were alive. And the Holy Spirit was to lead and guide them. Okay, now watch. Watch this. So when they rebelled, the Spirit of God had to leave because sin now lived in their spirit. And now there was no way for them to receive the Spirit of God in them. This is why all throughout the Old Testament, the Spirit of God would come upon people, but he would never live in people. Well, that was different. All right? Do you see what I'm saying? He couldn't live inside of them. 
Jesus comes along. He's not born of Adam. He's born of a virgin. The immaculate conception, right? He's born of a virgin because he's without sin. So does he have the Holy Spirit on the inside of him? Absolutely. He has the Holy Spirit on the inside of him. Okay? He lives on the inside of him. Just like, well, I'll get to you and I here in a minute. So he has the Holy Spirit on the inside of him. But now at his baptism, what happens? The Holy Spirit comes upon him completely, submerges him. He's now baptized, baptizoed in the Greek. He's completely submerged in the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now watch. From this point on, you'll see the next words in your Bible is, and the Spirit of God led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. The Spirit of God takes over the leadership of Jesus at that point. Luke chapter 4, whenever Jesus shows up to his first ministry campaign, he shows up and he says this. He doesn't say, I am here as Jesus. He says these. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. You hear it? I'm not here in my own power, Jesus saying. I'm here because the Spirit of God empowered me. And he begins to run it down. All right? So notice the transfer whenever the Holy Spirit took over Jesus' life and how Jesus began to be led by the Spirit of God. Is everyone hear my heart? Okay, now watch. So when Jesus was in the earth, he was not born again, but yet he received a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me ask you this. Your salvation. Jesus was born without sin. Were you born with sin? Yes. All right, now watch. Here's the way I like to say it. You ready? Jesus was born right the first time. You and I were not born right the first time, which explains a lot. But watch this. That's why we had to be born again, right? So that we're born into the kingdom. Now, whenever we're born into the kingdom, watch this. You were taken out of the world and into the body of Christ, and you were submerged into the body of Christ. Fair? Then you walked after the Lord, and you got water baptized, or you should have. All right? But then you still have the baptism of the Holy Spirit that needs to be experienced. So you have salvation, you have water baptism, and then you have what? Spirit baptism. Does everyone hear what I'm saying? So let me just kind of clarify it for me. When I was 14 years old, I gave my heart to Christ. When I, I came back, I got water baptized. I'm being very honest and sincere when I tell you. From 14 to 21, I did not even know anything about the Holy Spirit. Didn't know a thing about him. Didn't know he lived in me. I didn't know he could lead and guide my life. I didn't know anything. It was, in my, my theology was tie a, knot in a, uh, tie a knot in the rope and hold on. Hope you don't kill nobody before you see Jesus and he kicks you out. I had no idea. Then what happened was, I started talking to a guy. It's like, well, man, you're trying to do this in your own strength. You're trying to do it all you by yourself. You're trying to do this without the Holy Spirit. What you need is more of the Holy Spirit, which set me on a path of learning a lot more about the Holy Spirit and eventually coming to a point where I'm like, Lord, I need the baptism of the Holy Spirit to work and function in my life if I'm going to function in this life. Okay, that's how it worked for me. And again, I'm not saying that has to be you. I'm just trying to simply explain my experience. So, so here's what I want you to understand. Listen to this, everybody. When it comes to your salvation, your salvation is complete. And I'm not talking about heaven. I'm talking about on the earth. I'm not talking about your new resurrected body and your soul being completely renewed and re complete. I'm talking about just in the earth. You're going to see this pattern over and over again in the Bible. Here it is. Salvation by the blood, water baptism, and spirit baptism. You're going to see all three every time. Listen to it, everybody. Salvation, which is by the blood of the lamb, water baptism, spirit baptism. You're going to see it over and over again. Let me just tell you, God doesn't do anything new. He does the same thing over and over again, all throughout the Bible. He doesn't try and confuse us. He builds patterns over and over again. So I'm going to go two examples, two extremes. I'm going to give you an example in the Old Testament. I'm going to give you some examples in the New Testament. Is that fair? And here's what I want you to hear. Listen to me. You're going to see salvation is this. By the blood, by the water, by the spirit. Listen to it. Help me out. By the blood and by the spirit. One more time. By the what? Blood by the water and by the spirit. Baptism of blood, baptism of water, 
and baptism of spirit. You're going to see it over and over and over again. Let me give you an example of that, just real, real simple. Look at this. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Paul talking about the, uh, the uh, children of Israel. All right, watch this. If you don't track with me, I'll break it down. Here it is. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware of our fathers, talking about the children of Israel, who were under the cloud, spirit, all passed through the sea, water, and all were baptized into Moses. He was their deliverer. And I'll talk about that deliverance here in a minute. It came by the blood of a lamb. In the cloud and in the sea, and all ate of the spirit, same spiritual food and drank of the same spiritual drink. For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them. I don't know about you, but I find that hilarious that for 40 years they walked around the desert. Everywhere they went, they were like, there's that rock. <laughs> okay, yeah, I thought it was funny. But anyway, so here's the deal. You ready? But notice the context here. All three are right there. So let me give it to you this way. Look at this now. You ready? Israel's deliverance from, uh, the, from Egypt. Look at how their deliverance came. Salvation came by the blood of the lamb. You remember this? And I, I want to remind you of how it happened. Um, and I'm going to turn my, my, my back to you just so you can understand because I want to make sure you get a good picture. Not of this because that's awful. But anyway, all right. A matter of fact, I don't even like looking at the screen. It's on the side. I should work out more. But anyway, so here we go. You ready? <laughs> In the new building, it's going to be really big. But anyway, all right. <laughs> it's never good. I need to stop. All right. But watch this, everybody. Here we go. Here we go. So watch this, everybody. Moses was commanded, when the death angel passed by, you're to take the blood of a lamb and put it over the doorpost. You guys remember that? Okay, now watch what he said. Watch what he said. Facing the door, he said, you're going to take a hyssop branch. You're going to dip it in the blood. You're going to go to the left side of the doorpost. Watch, to the right side of the doorpost, and you're going to do the top. Guess what's going to happen at the top? The blood's going to drip down. Guess what you're going to do? You're going to make the sign of the cross of the blood of the lamb. That will be the first part of your deliverance. Get what I'm saying? There's your first baptism. That's our salvation. We are all saved by the blood of the lamb and recognizing that power to save us from the death angel and Y'all get what I'm saying, right? Let me move on just for the sake of time. So let's talk about this one, the water baptism. The Bible says that they crossed the Red Sea. Is that right? And you know, the Bible calls that their second baptism. Their first baptism was their salvation. The second baptism was a baptism of water. And then the Bible says they were led after they went over the water. The Bible says that the Spirit of God led them from that point on. He gave them a cloud of glory in the daytime and a pillar of fire at night. And it led them. It, listen to it. It led them. Had they not had that, they wouldn't have been led. They were led by the pillar and the cloud of fire. Or the a cloud of glory and the pillar of fire. Day and night. They had HVAC 24-7 for 40 years, baby. All right? So this is what happened. And they were led. But notice this. You ready? You have blood, water, spirit. Blood, water, spirit. Blood, water, spirit. Let me give you a New Testament example. Look at this verse. 1 John 5, 6. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not only by water, but by water and blood. Now watch this. And it is the spirit that bears witness because the spirit is, is truth. For there are three that bear witness in heaven. What are they? The Father. But guess who that's talking about? Father God. Right? There is the Word. Guess who the Word is? Jesus. John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word is God. This is Jesus. Okay? Third. And the on the Holy Spirit. So there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Would y'all all agree to that? Okay, now but what about the earth? What about the earth? What about the earth? Watch this. And there are three that bear witness in the earth. This is the Spirit and the blood. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. You see it over and over and over and over and over and over again. What God is saying is that we should recognize first the blood, second the water, third the spirit. That is how God delivers us. That's how God expects us to live this thing out. And I notice this. It says the three bear witness. What are they bearing witness to? The, to the supernatural new life that the Christian should be walking in. 
That is, that's what it's saying. That's what it's bearing witness to so that you and I can walk this thing out. So let's review a little bit and make sure I got everybody as I move forward. Salvation is the new creation, and that is your new birth experience. Let me just say this. You cannot go to heaven without that. You cannot go to heaven. Here's the second one. Water baptism, which represents a cutting away of the flesh, all right, and a walking in new life. Now get this, everybody. You ready? Listen to this. That one is optional. But it is recommended. Jesus was baptized in water. You and I should follow him. Because our deliverance happens by the blood, by the water, and by the... Come on, y'all are getting it. How about this one? Baptism of the Holy Spirit is when we receive the power to walk in the new life. Just like the cloud of glory and the pillar of fire. But except now, it's not on the outside, it's on the... It's on the inside, on the inside. And we begin to walk at, with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit begins to speak to us and guide us and lead us. So here's the truth. You will never walk in a supernatural life until you have supernatural power from on high by the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Let me give it to you this way now. You ready? This was uh, t it'd be three days ago. I woke up in the morning, and this is what was on my heart. And I'm going to say something, but I just want you to hear me. You ready? Let me ask you a question. Don't answer out loud. Those of you in Peru, don't answer out loud. Do you believe that the early church in the book of Acts looks very different than the church of America today. I said don't answer out loud. Wow. <laughs> what are you guys doing? <laughs> Good Lord Jesus. No wonder we're moving so fast. <laughs> Every service that happens, it's all right. Here, here's the deal. You ready? Does the church look like the early church in the book of Acts? The answer is no. You say, Why? Here's my thought or theory, and this is what I felt like the Lord laid on my heart to show. Listen to this. Could it be that the church does not have the power it needs because it is rejecting the person it needs? Yes. Yeah. I, I'm not saying that for everybody. I'm just saying for me. I'm 14 years old at a Baptist church. I give my heart to Christ, and after that, I'm never even told about a Holy Spirit. Okay? Let's talk about it. How many churches you go to that talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit leading and guiding a believer? Not many. And then we wonder why there's no power in the church. Well, the reason there's no power is the very person that gives the power is the person the church by and large has rejected. Okay? And, and even some people here today are listening or watching. When I say baptism of the Holy Spirit, they're like, Whoa! no, 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 no. I'm not talking about tongues. We'll deal with that in a couple weeks. I'm not even talking about any of the gifts. I'm not talking about all the manifest. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm simply asking, should we have the Holy Spirit and should he lead and guide our church? I believe so. I believe he is the key to making all this work. Without him, we have nothing. So I'm going to ask a question. Everyone has failed so far, so don't be surprised. Who's the most important person in leading our lives? Do you know what most people will say? Jesus. They'll say Jesus. But even Jesus said himself, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I go, he will not come. And when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. Guess who we need more of? Absolutely. It's the Holy Spirit that leads and guides. So now going back to the understanding of our leading up, the Holy Spirit leading our lives starts out with the blood, goes to water, and then it goes to spirit. Let me show you some examples of that in the New Testament church, and I want to just show you quick, and I'll land the plane pretty quick. Then Philip, he went down the city of Samaria. Samaria. This is Acts 8, and we're going to look at Acts 19. I'm going to give you two. There are other examples, but I'm going to give you two. And what we're looking for, everybody, watch this. We're looking for this. We're looking for, watch, blood. And spirit, blood, water, and spirit. Did their salvation stop with just saying the sinner's prayer? Did their salvation stop with just getting dipping in water? Or did they make, make sure, did the disciples make sure, or the apostles at this point, make sure they were filled with the spirit of God? Watch it. Here we go. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and he preached Christ to them. And the multitudes were in one accord, heeding the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Imagine that. For unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed. Many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. Come on, somebody. That's the church right there. 
It says, and there was a great joy in the city, of course, because the Spirit of God is moving on people's lives. Watch this. But there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city and was astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was something great. I love it. Anytime you have to claim you're something, you ain't. Just say it. It says, to whom all, they, uh, great, uh, all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God, until a real man of God shows up. It says, and they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. Now watch the next verse. But when they believed Philip, he's preaching Christ to them. They believed. What are they now? Believers. What are they now? Saved. When they believe, Philip, they're saved as he preached these things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Both men and women were baptized. So they believed and were baptized. We have blood and we have water. Hmm. Then uh, Simon himself also believed. Well, praise God. And when he had baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracles and the signs that were done by Philip. Now watch. And now when the apostles were in Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they said, don't worry about it. They got everything they need. We don't even need to go visit those folks. They're saved and on their way to heaven. Tell them to tie a knot in the rope and hold on, baby. Is that what they said? No. Hearing that they had received and they'd been water baptized, watch what they say. They sent Peter and John to them. And when they came down, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. But Pastor Troy, I thought they were saved. I thought they had the Holy Spirit. Uh huh. So was Jesus before his water baptism. But he still had to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had not fallen, notice the wording, fallen upon. Not talking about in, talking about fallen upon him. None of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus when they had laid hands on them and they received the, the Holy Spirit. All right? Again, we're not talking about manifestations. We're just talking about they received. Let me show you. Does everyone see the blood, the water, and the Spirit? You see it? Okay. Let me give you another example. This is again. Yep. 19 of Acts. And it happened when Apollos was in Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples. So are they believers? Well, yeah, you can't be a disciple until you're a believer. I've never seen someone lost going, yep, I'm a disciple of Jesus. You have to be a believer first before you're a disciple. So they're disciples, they're saved. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Now, some people would argue with Paul. I don't know about you, but if I'm talking to a preacher and he says, well, wait, 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 Paul. No, no, Paul's theology is right. He wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Is it a valid question? Did you receive the Holy Spirit? In other words, have you been baptized with the Spirit of God since you were saved? That's what he's asking. And they said, I love their answer, because this was me from 14 to 21. So they said to him, we've not even so much as heard there was a Holy Spirit. Nobody told us anything. He said, okay, then. So then into what were you baptized? What? And now he's testing their theology. Who are they following? Now watch the next part. It says, so they said to him, into John's baptism. He goes, okay, that's cool. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying that the people should look and believe on him who is to come. And after him, that is on Christ Jesus. So watch what happens. So when they had heard this, they were baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. Now we have water. So we have blood already. Now we have water. Now they're baptized in the water. They come up out of the water. Now watch this. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, spirit, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. We'll talk about all that in a couple weeks. Now the men were about what? 12 in all. So here's my point. There are two examples where you see what? The blood, water, and the spirit. Notice this, everybody. They did not stop. The apostles did not stop until they had all three under wrap. You guys get what I'm saying? Water, blood, and spirit. Okay? So, brings me to where I want to land the plane. We'll talk about it in a couple weeks. Check this out, everybody. God's power came after spirit baptism in every scenario. There's not a scenario in the Bible where the Spirit of God's power was released in people's lives till after they were 
spirit-filled. Now, again, we'll talk about what that looks like because there are some people that say, well, you got to this, you got to that. I know. Put the religious ideas aside, and let's just hammer it out this way. Look at this. In Jesus' life, spirit baptized, power. In the early church, spirit baptized, power. Listen to this. In my life, spirit baptized, power. To overcome the flesh, to deal with depression, deal with anxiety, deal with all the things that I've had to deal with in my life, and same with you. A lot of times we're looking, we're looking to fix these things in our lives, but no one tells us the power that we need to be able to fix it. All right? Okay? And, and I know right now in this room, those of you in Peru and online, you're like, but do I have it? Do I not? We'll talk about it in two weeks from now, whether you have it or not. All right? And we're not, and you'll be amazed at where I stand. You'll be amazed at where I stand. But nevertheless, here's my heart. You ready? In my life, I very rarely teach on this subject. It's probably the most area I stay away from the most. Do you want to know why? When I first started the church, I preached on this all the time. Had no problem with it. But I'm going to be very, very honest with you. I started preaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And for whatever reason, we attracted every fruit, flake, and nut for a thousand miles. <laughs> and I got so wounded with the spirit-filled stuff that it, I just was like, I don't want to hear anything about all that stuff no more. I don't want to talk about tongues and prophecy. I don't want to talk about gifts of the Spirit. I don't want to talk about any of that. I just want to preach to people and get them to heaven. But then I realized that I'm shelling, selling you short, and I'll be very honest with you, it wounded me very, very deeply. So I stayed away from talking about this stuff for a long period of time. Now, I believe with all my heart, God's healing my heart, and this is why I'm so anti-weird people, anti the Holy Spirit told me, shut up, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Come on, somebody, you yeah, know what I'm saying? So please understand, I've been wounded by this stuff, and yet at the same time, I'm willing to look at this stuff and talk about these things. But can I tell you? It became such a part of my life that I refused to go to Bible colleges that didn't believe it. I, I'll, I'll be honest, whenever I was coming out of the military, I wanted to go to Bible college. I called Bible colleges, and I was a veteran. I had VA, so I, I, uh, I had my Montgomery GI Bill. I could go to any school I wanted to go to. I would call colleges and say, hey, do you believe in the baptism with the Holy Spirit? Do you believe in 9 out of 10? No, no, we don't believe in it. No, 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 no. I called Lester Summerall's. Do you guys believe in a baptism? They're like, absolutely, we believe in it. I'm like, you know what? Sign me up, honey. I'm there. Because here's what I know. Me being filled with the Holy Spirit had a direct correlation to transforming my life. Without it, it wouldn't have been transformed. So I refused to go to a place that didn't at least agree with it. Y'all getting what I'm saying? And that's for me, all right? So we'll talk about that in a couple weeks. Here's the last thing I want to do, and I'm going to land the plane and let you out. Do you need this third baptism? My opinion is, I believe everybody should, all right? Now, in, the, in light of that, here's what I want to caution you about. My goodness, I've seen it abused. Listen, it's not a requirement for salvation. I've met people who say, well, bless God, if you ain't got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're going to hell. Shut up. <laughs> Leave me alone. And don't call me. Don't call me. <laughs> Leave me alone, all right? Listen, it's not a salvation issue. Here's the second thing. It's not a demand Anytime people put a demand on you having something, it's not God. Have y'all figured that out enough about God? God leads us by desire, not demand. He's not selling timeshares. If you don't act now, it'll never go. Stop. Leave me alone. It's by desire. God wants you to have a desire. So my heart in this message is to create a desire. And again, whether in a couple weeks, whether you... Whether you want or don't want or you like or dislike, it's not my point. My point is to explain what the Bible says about it and let you decide what and how much of you want of God. Does that make sense, everybody? My heart is that you get everything God has for you. That's my heart. And that's what I want for you. That's what I want for me. You know what I mean? So in light of that, let me pray. Now, before I pray, here's what I want to do. You ready? Very, very simple. Just extend your hands like this. And I'm going to pray that we'll all receive something from the Holy Spirit. Father... It, those of you in Peru, come on, here we go. Father, I thank you for your precious, awesome power. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you. We honor you today. And Lord, I pray that you would fill us all, fill us completely, saturate us in your presence, God. Saturate us. Father, I thank you for it. And Lord, I pray that you would minister to each and every one of our hearts and that we would all be filled to the brim with you, God. We love you. We honor you. And Lord, over the next couple weeks, I pray that this would be our prayer, 
that each and every day of our lives, we'd say, Holy Spirit, I want more of you. And Lord, I expect you to fill us up. We all need more of you. So God, let us be the people you've called us to be. We recognize that your salvation comes by the blood, by the water, and by your spirit. So Holy Spirit, have your way. Lead us and guide us, and I know you will. And I thank you for it, God, for filling your people. In Jesus' name, everybody says, amen. Amen. Will you clap your hands and give the Lord a big thanks?